Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Dave and Lefebvre, and this is the final live stream of the Snowboard Stoke live stream for this week. Sorry we're running late. I had to pee. Shit fucking happens. Anyways, in case you guys didn't know, you're going to get your final top five of the week after this live stream is over. We're going to do a YouTube premiere with it, and it's got a special host with Randy, the warranty guy. So... For those of you that don't know who Randy the Warranty Guy is, you're about to learn. There's a lot of Zima in this episode that's coming out. So, yeah. Uh, anyways. Uh, any Can't really say anything else new and exciting that's going on. I mean, I think we all kind of know where the fuck we're at at this point. We're all just trying to survive here. Just trying to survive. Uh, if you have questions, plop them over in the chat. We'll go from there. Um, yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of where we're at with everything. So anyone's got questions, put it over there, uh, for every super chat, got a spin of the wheel. So you got, we got four sticker packs today, four stickers, and then we got two mystery prize packs. And the way we're doing the mystery prize pack is you get your name entered in Then I'm going to pull it from the hat. That's kind of it. I got paper. I got a pen somewhere, I think. Wherever the fuck it went, I just, there it is. Um, yeah, so I got a pen, write it down, throw it in there. So for all you guys super chatting like that, otherwise, plop your questions over in the chat or if you're on mobile down below, and we're going to go through that. Oh, and we got an asshole comment right now, too, from Tim OK Right. Why did I have to endure an ad before it started? Because I need to fucking make money, too, asshole. So fuck you. You don't want it? Get the fuck out. Yeah, there you go. All right, let's see what we got here. Okay, I don't really see any questions just yet, so there you go. But yeah, for anyone that's got questions, just make sure they get over there, and we're going to go from there. Michael Anderson starting it off right with the spin of the wheel. All right, Michael, you get a sticker pack. You know the drill. Hit me up, info at Angry Snowboarder. With a screenshot of this, I'll get it in the mail tomorrow. All the sticker packs from yesterday's uh, live stream, the winners and stuff like that, are going out tomorrow. I'm just going to do a big mass uh, mail out. i got to pull vinyl and make a few more stickers. I'm getting a little low on some stuff. So, yeah. Okay. Shane Corneliuson, three boards that are better than the T-Rice since you say it's overhyped. Okay. Jones Mountain Twin, right there. Boom. Done. Ride Algorithm. Better, right there. Yes, typo. Better. T. Rice is just fucking overhyped. Not going to fucking pussyfoot around it. So there you go. All right. Benjamin Gove, thanks for the stickers. Did you get them already? I I put yours in the other day. So I don't know who's getting mail or not. Like Our postal system was fucked up before all this shit, so I can't imagine it being any better. Like The Breckenridge Post Office is the worst thing on fucking earth. All right. Dominic Perry. Mm, movie recommendation. All right. I think now is a good time that we should all start watching Predator. Because it's going to teach you how to act in the jungle and not make stupid mistakes. Because who knows what the fuck's happening next. So everyone should watch Predator. And Predator 2 is highly underrated. So many people hate on that movie, but it is highly underrated. Predator 2 is great. Danny Glover was good in that. So, yeah. All right. Ooh. Raul Duke. Taught myself to make bread today. Pretty proud. Duke. You got flour, at least. Oh, you're on the line. You get another spin. Story time. All right. Oh, what do we want to talk about today? What what horrible, embarrassing moments has Averin ever had in his life that we haven't talked about today? I'm kind of brain farting on stories. Anyways, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I keep thinking about different things that I've done over the years. I guess I'll tell you guys about my 21st birthday in Ellicottville, New York. So I turned 21 and got out of work and promptly went snowboarding because I always snowboard on my birthday. And then I went down to the depot restaurant across from Holiday Valley. It's an old train station. 
Uh, my friends Moose and Vicky own it. Great place. If you're ever there, go check it out. So I go in and proceed to tell the bartender that I need dinner and that it's my 21st birthday, to which her response is, you've been drinking here forever. And I look at her and I was like, is this a problem? She goes, no, you tip great. Further proof, you can drink underage if you tip well and don't draw attention to yourself. All right? There you go. So anyways, I proceed to get some food in me, and then they had $5 pitchers of vodka Red Bull. So I bought two of them, and I'm double fisting two pitchers with straws, and I'm just getting fucking hammered. Now you're mixing an upper and a downer. You become a basket case of emotions in there. Anyways, I think it was about like four or five of those in when I decided that I wanted to order a pitcher of Long Island iced tea. Holy fuck, that was a bad idea. So I drink a whole pitcher of Long Island iced tea, and one of the guys I worked with at Holiday Valley had convinced a girl because it was my birthday that she should make out with me. So she, she, we're outside, and they're smoking cigarettes and whatever, and she goes in for a kiss. I projectile vomited down her shirt. Full blood. She's running around screaming, and I'm like wiping the vomit from my face. And I just look at her, and I remember, this is one of the few things I remember the night is, so I take it you don't want to make out with me? And she's just like screaming, running around like a chicken with a head cut off in the parking lot. And I proceed to go in and order two more pitchers of vodka Red Bull <laughs> and drank until I blacked out. <laughs> Not fun. Don't drink like that. It's a bad thing. Oh, Red Bull and alcohol is a bad, bad thing. Also, for anyone that's got questions, uh, for Kevin, he is in the chat room right now. He will be there to answer them. I don't know if Alan is going to make it in or not. He actually went uh, to get tested today to see if he has coronavirus. Also, a few of my other friends have uh, uh, come down with it. So it's starting here. Uh, okay, Sean Grom, putting my feet in the hands of the wheel. Spin again. Ooh, you're getting your name put into the to the mystery, the mystery prize pack. And there are two mystery prize packs, so there's two chances to win. They're two awesome prizes. I think everyone's going to be really stoked about what I'm doing with these. Uh, I really hope. So, uh, yeah. So, Sean. There you go. Just, just so everyone can see, Sean Grom going into the mystery. He's got the first one. It's going in the hat. Boom. It's in there. See, everyone, it's in there. So there's one, one in there. Uh, okay, we got Tom T. 21 is simulator. Better, same, worse, plus which now for it? So the 21 is simulator stays the same. It's still the same. It just goes to the murdered out graphic. So it's still going to be a phenomenal board. Uh, for now bindings, I would probably put the now times yes on there personally. That would be me. Lose a turn. All right. Okay, we got a super chat from Russell Brown. Favorite snowboard film? Uh, let's see. Uh, that's kind of on the line. Lose a turn. Anyways, answer your question on that. My favorite snowboard ter uh, film uh, is probably Stand and Deliver, Mac Dog Films. Kevin Jones' part in that was very inspirational and motivational to me as a child. Uh, also, um, the soundtrack is phenomenal in that movie as well, although Decade is also really good. Like, the old Mac Dog stuff right around the 10-year mark were probably my favorite movies of all time in snowboarding. So, yeah. Uh, okay, let's see. William Graham, yo, Avery, do you still skate? I haven't skated in two years, but that's because I was fighting knee injuries two years ago, and then I had to rehab through that, and then last year, I just, I, I won't lie, I, I fucking went beast mode in the gym like six days a week, gained about 20, 20 pounds in there, and was just working out like mad just so I could hold my body together, which it's actually slowly deteriorating right now. So next week, i got to figure out a whole bunch of exercises and film stuff. Also, update about next week's content for you guys. Uh, tomorrow, there will be no content at all on the channel. I'm taking full day off. I need some mental time. 
Um, plus, my mom mentioned that someone worked on their car that may have had coronavirus, so I'm kind of sketched out about that right now. And they're in New York State, and we all know how New York State is doing. So I'm going to talk to my family tomorrow. I got some other stuff to look into. So there's nothing. Sunday, you will get a snowboard review, one of the last of the 2020 snowboard reviews. Uh, basically, I'm just going to shit on this board company anyways. It's, it's another cockroach board, so who gives a fuck about that? Uh, starting Monday, we will have Kevin and I recorded a podcast a week ago, and you guys will start to see uh, video segments from that, as well as there will be an audio podcast on Podbean, Spotify, and hopefully iTunes. I think they're starting to pick us up again. Uh, I got to look into that. Got the time now to do it. So it is pre recorded. There will be a notice at the start of the audio podcast, and then there'll be a disclaimer on the videos from that that there will be Wednesday next week. You will get a new top five. We're going back to the weekly format in the top fives. And then the week after that, I'm working on something right now. Don't kind of trying to figure it out. I got to talk with Kevin some more and we got to figure out logistics and stuff. But uh, yeah, um, we'll, we'll go from there. I'm not sure if Kevin's going to be like, I don't know if I'm just going to put my tablet on the mannequin's body and just have it where the head is. So it's Kevin in the head, in the face area or what? I'm not sure. Figuring out some logistics. So Kevin and I got to talk about some stuff about that. Okay, let's see. Poop Pile 27. Any tips for a Midwest snowboarder preparing to ride in Colorado for the first time? Worried about the elevation change. In a... <sighs> well, you're not riding in Colorado anytime soon, so you got some time to build up your cardio. So the big thing is get your cardio up. If you can right now, if you can hit the bike and go for a bike ride, go for a run by yourself, make sure you're by yourself, you know, keep that isolation going. we got to do this. We all got to do our part out there, people. So you got to, you got to make sure you can do that. But the other thing is uh, you end up getting like some deficiencies when you get here. It's usually a potassium deficiency. So you want to make sure that and just get yourself in shape, get used to it. It does take some time to acclimate when you're out here. And if you're coming right from sea level up, the other thing is don't drink alcohol while you're here for the first two days. Let yourself just kind of get used to the fact that you're at elevation. Okay. Alan Poon, is that hoodie that you're wearing for sale at the merch store? No, it is not. This was a limited run uh, a year ago. I think it was a year ago we did it. I can't remember. It's been a while. So, yeah, this, this one's discontinued. Okay. Jorge Morales. I've been finding myself drifting more towards stiff camber directional boards for grooming, carving, and side haste. I know. Karua Cafe Racer, but was wondering what you guys think. Well, if you want stiffer, the Karuas are stiff. Like They lack torsional flex. It's almost full plank pile from everything I've heard. I've never ridden one, but everyone I've talked to says the exact same thing. Very torsionally stiff. I mean, if you're looking for like a carving camber directional cruiser, there you go. The other thing I would say, look at Nidecker. You've got the concept, the tracer, and the area. Those three right there would be really solid. Battalion Carver is also phenomenal as well. <sighs> okay, let's see what we got. Water bottle. Kind of want to buy a public dispute. Opinions. Uh, everyone I've talked to that's ridden a public other than like the super crazy diehard fanboys has been highly disappointed. So I'm going to leave that with you. Uh, yeah. Okay. Michael Traumator. Hey, Ren, did you catch Shred Ahead last night? Jim did a cool shout out to you. Oh, hell yeah. I watched Shred Ahead snowboarding. For all you guys that don't know, Shred Ahead Snowboarding is the over 60 snowboarding channel on YouTube that has way too many less subscribers than it should. It should have over at least 1,000 in my opinion. So all of you guys need to go subscribe to Shred Ahead. Uh, love Jim. Love Ted. It's Jim and Ted's shredful adventures over there. You know, Jim's the man. Over 65. Fight just, uh, just did his last round of chemo two months ago. So he's beating, he's trying to beat cancer, shit like that. We all need to support those guys. They deliver a really unique message. Content's a little more beginner-oriented, but I think that's going to change now that uh, we're basically all in quarantine. At least I'm hoping for that. Hopefully Jim and Ted are popping in here at some point today. So, yeah. 
Uh, Mega Crush 54, what do you think about Solomon HPS Powder Board? We have a review of it. The 57 HPS is in the Solomon Review playlist. Go check it out. It was actually a fun ride. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. Okay. Ian Futch, what's worse, Breck Post Office or Skiers and why? I'm pretty sure everyone that works at the Breck Post Office is a skier, so they're the worst of the fucking worst. And if anyone's ever been to the Breck Ridge Post Office, I mean, I'm happy they're open and I can send stuff, but God, they are the most frust. Like, those people are there to die. That's literally it. Like, before all this, they were there to just die, and now they're just there waiting to die, collect so they can collect their pension if there is one. Uh, yeah. All right. All right, let's see. Then... Okay, I think we're kind of caught up on the top questions. Uh, let's see. Okay. Okay, let's see. Rock and Roller, Amplid, Pentaquark for Corduroy Slayer or something else, and then how about something more playful to balance out the Quiver, Endeavor Board of Directors? I have not ridden the Amplid Pentaquark uh, yet. So I really can't speak of that. That's actually a brand that in the last few years, every time I reach out, just nothing happens. So unfortunately, I can't really speak about it. The board of directors isn't as playful as uh, people think. It's you know, I mean, I think if you're looking at playful from Endeavor, you'd be better off looking at the live like that. The board of directors is more actually, ironically. I got a board box full of Endeavor boards today. Like, I can't believe it. We're fucking in the apocalypse, all locked down, whatever. And I got snowboards. But coronavirus can live on cardboard for up to 24 hours, so they're sitting on my porch. So if anyone knows where I live, you can come steal snowboards from me. Please don't steal snowboards from me. I'll be really upset. Okay. Uh, okay. Ding Kang, a simulator field's a bit undergunned for going big in the park. Is it too much overlap if I go for a board like the Mercury? Any suggestions? If you think that it's undergunned in the park for you, you don't want a Mercury, you would probably do better with this year's indoor survival, in all honesty, because it's got those titanal struts in there. Um, otherwise, DOA is going to pretty much be the same as that if you stay with Capita. Outsiders, you're probably not going to be underwhelmed with that. So I think if you're looking at other boards, you might be better off looking at like a Ride Burnout or a Helix, especially if you want asymmetrical to Helix, because it's going to take like 30 to 40 days for that thing to break in because it's that fucking stiff. Uh, that would probably be the way I would go if you're really looking for going huge on jumps. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Tom T, Vanessa Tracy never called me, still waiting by my phone. I think she might be out splitboarding still. I don't know where she is. I haven't heard from her in two days. Slide back into her DMs on Instagram, at vcard with three Ds. <laughs> Will Graham, Avery, do you think skating rails translates into riding rails? Oh, yeah, totally, 100%. It teaches you that ankle balance as well as lower body movement to get on there, but you've got the ability to actually jump off and kick the board out with a snowboard. You're locked in and you're like, oh fuck, I'm dying. So yeah. Let's see. Rich listener. Oh damn, 2021 Super DOA in the background. Yeah, I wanted to see how long till you guys noticed that was back there. I put that in today. Slowly moving through all the different boards I've got floating around in here. Um, Nick K, it's an insane talent being able to talk into the camera and make it super entertaining. I think it's just a talent to be able to talk articulately and not stutter and sit there and be like, um, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, like that. I mean, case in point, if you uh, ever watch a James Beastie video from The Good Ride, that dude stutters over everything he is because he's a horrible public speaker. And you'd think after a thousand videos, he'd learn how to actually talk articulately. That just tells you he's fucking mentally incompetent. All right, Michael Kulig with the $10 Super Chat. Avery Taco Fund. All right, Michael, let's give you a spin of the wheel, buddy. Ooh, sticker pack. Michael, shoot me an email, info at Angry Snowboard with a screenshot of this. 
and I will get you a sticker pack in the mail tomorrow. All right. Huh. Kevin Ma, took your advice, made a skateboard with two-liter balance board. This thing is sketchier than I thought, but it's good practice. It's only sketchy until you start to develop the muscle memory for it, and then it, it gets to the point. Like, I used to play Call of Duty on mine uh, when I lived up by the mountain. I used to have a rear projection Mitsubishi TV, and I was playing Call of Duty, the original on PS3, the the one, not, not the original, but the second one, or whatever it is, Modern Warfare 2, whatever. I was playing that online, and I would be playing that on the balance board, and I could still go 30 and 3 every round playing on solo, fucking free-for-all, so... There's hope for you. Let's give you a spin of the wheel, buddy. Ooh, movie recommendation. All right. We're going with the lesser known Christmas movie on this one. See, everyone says Die Hard is like the ultimate action Christmas movie. But people always forget about Invasion USA taking place at Christmas. Chuck Norris, Duel, Uzis. See... Invasion USA is a really underrated canon films movie, and it's a really underrated Christmas movie by and large, too. See, everyone's like, ah, oh, we gotta watch Die Hard at Christmas, John McClane saving Christmas, but I'm over here, Matt Smith, Invasion USA, saving us from the terrorists in Florida. People don't think about that, so everyone should go watch Invasion USA. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Okay, let's see what we got here. My boy, Billy v Ray Valentine, the other moderator in here, just putting on a PSA to Vanessa Tracy. She still hasn't accepted him on Instagram. Doesn't she know she, that he's a moderator on here? Moderation, man. Moderation. Josh Ruinsky, did Vanessa get a boyfriend yet? I don't know. She's probably out splitboarding, just avoiding human contact still. Oh, man. Poor Vanessa. I don't know if we scared her away or not. We were getting a little overboard with everything. All right. Okay. Ian the Welchman, Lethal Weapon is my Christmas movie. That's another good one. That's a Shane Black film, so, you know, I, I love... You know, you can get, like, the whole trifecta of action Christmas movies if you really think about it. It's crazy. As long as you don't watch the one where Hulk Hogan saves Christmas. Okay. Okay, let's see. Cameron Perry's in the house, guys. All right. This is a PSA from Raul Duke. If you're afraid of falling while practicing snowboarding, you're on the wrong channel. Damn right. Fuck, man. I could slip and fall and break my hip. I'm still out there doing it. Um, actually, you know, we're out here. But no, uh, I think actually I might have to do a segment or something in, in this idea of something I got coming on where we, we work on carpet pressing and not like the – Board insiders on the carpet press reviews of the flex of the board. I mean, like actually working on pressing a snowboard. Okay. Water bottle. Why watch Christmas movies when you can take a lot of bad bath salts and fight mall Santas? And then you can watch bad Santa. Although I think at that point, if you're doing bath salts and you're fighting mall Santas, you will really, you've gotten to that bad Santa level almost. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. I feel like you guys are slowing down with questions here. I'm getting really disappointed in you. You know what to do. Get those questions over there. The more questions you ask, the longer I'll probably stay on. Also, don't forget, after this live stream tonight, 8.15 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, brand new top five, over seven minutes of Randy, the warranty guy, doing a top five for you. We cracked open Azima, we got him drunk, and we got him out there for you guys. Uh, all right. Let's see. Okay. 
Okay. Alpine Ibex, what's your healthy diet like right now? It's a little questionable at best, but uh, typically a normal day is wake up, stretch, make a smoothie with banana, strawberry, blueberry, pineapple, a scoop of collagen peptides as well with almond milk. And then um, usually I get the Colorado Rocky uh, yogurt, but well, who knows what's going on. So I've been having to use YoPlay, which is like Yo play looks like really thick semen in all honesty. It sucks. But I make the smoothie. That's what I do. And then maybe I have a bagel with it. Uh, then I usually go snowboard when I can. After snowboarding, it's usually tacos, which are some of the most unhealthy things I can eat because they're doused in butter, but they're great. Mahi's tacos at Copper. Whew, fucking phenomenal. And if you're ever in Breckenridge, Sancho's tacos are fire as well. Avoid the taco hell. Don't, don't eat the Taco Bell. That's bad. But uh, then I try to eat um, – when I go on these, these – crazy, I go on like crazy stretches where I eat like almost the same thing every day. So it was – it's usually a baked potato with steamed broccoli and uh, steamed carrots. And, you know, I put a little garlic salt, some butter on there, uh, sour cream, cheese, ketchup in the baked potato. And I just sort of go from there. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Will Graham, Avery, what's your opinion on the snowboard addiction? I try to avoid it. It's, it. It doesn't cater to me, so I don't care to. I mean, I know people that have used it and claim to swear by it, and I also know people that are like, it was a waste of money. It's uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, it doesn't cater to me, so I don't have an opinion either way. Okay. Let's see. Rich Lesnar, you going to ride the 6.5 Doughboy? We actually have a review of the Doughboy from not this current season, but the season before. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, so there's that. Um, Cameron Holmrost, thoughts on Cardiff Snowcraft? I like the fact they're made at GP87. I think they have some unique shapes. I think they have some unique side cuts. I like what the brand is trying to do. So there is that going on as well um i need to ride one but they're kind of hard to get a hold of so i've just been kind of just like man but i know my local shop the underground is supposed to carry them next this next fall we'll see who knows what's going on in the future so yeah uh yeah okay uh we got a super chat from tom t story regis roland fifth founding father met him well, you got a story, so I'll tell you. I have met Regis Roland. I met him at SIA when he was working with Oppo before um, they got the plug pulled on them. It was like their last big hurrah. I think it was right after they signed Sage for the Olympics or right before the Olympics. But, yeah, I got to meet Re Regis. I shook his hand said thank you. He's definitely the founding father of snowboarding over in uh, France, in Europe over there. He definitely did a lot of stuff. i gotta, I got to stop playing with this thing. Um, but yeah, he, he is, he's a phenomenal guy. Like, I think he's kind of undercredited. Like people always think Tom Sims, Jake, uh, Dimitri Milovich, uh, Sherman Poppins, but no, definitely Regis had a huge hand in doing a lot of stuff for snowboarding. So yeah. All right. Sean Grom. Let's spin this wheel. Yeah. Uh, I just gave a story, so I'm not going to give a story. So fuck it. We'll just go over. You get a sticker pack. <laughs> I'm cheating on my own wheel. So hit me up, Sean. You're going to get a sticker pack. Anyways, um, to answer your question, top five boards you were stoked to review this year. Ah, man. I really wanted to ride the Spring Break Powder Twin. That was on my top of my list. The new. Um, I really wanted to go back and re-ride a wide version of the Endeavor archetype, which that actually showed up today. Uh, the party mod from Rome as well, because it's supposed to be the mod rocker, but they're making it in wide sizes as well. So they brought back the mod rocker, which I think a lot of people really love that board. And so to see that it's uh, coming back, that one was on there. Uh, the Mike Rankwit from Telos. I really wanted to ride that one. 
Um, that was going to be one that was on the list that was really sticking out. And the GNU Gremlin really caught my eye as well. So there's like five right there. Um, anyways, we got another spin from Davey Two Shoes. Spin again, buddy. All right. Lose a turn. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll get that extra block <laughs> if, if we ever get avocados. All right. Oh, God. Chris Wong, Battalion Surfer versus the Camel 2. Which one handles Pow better? They're both phenomenal in Pow. I've ridden them both in over two feet of snow. If I had to choose, I would definitely go with the Surfer over the Camel 2. The Camel 2 is a little bit stiffer. And so it's it's a little bit more aggressive. The Surfer is actually softer. Oh, we got Olive with the Super Chat in here. So let's go. Let's give her a spin. Lose a turn. I'm sorry. Wah, wah, wah. Okay. Jimmy McElroy. Let's give you a spin. Oh, my God. I think i got to recalibrate the wheel here. It's just too many in a row. It's... Uh, Let's just loosen that up a little bit. Uh, anyways, picked up the Signal Yup based on your review. Best board I've ever owned. The Yup is an amazing, amazing board. I love that board. Super, super phenomenal. Okay. Uh, MPIX00, what's the whiteboard behind you? That is the Spring Break uh, Powder Racer for next year. So, yeah, there's that. Uh, Dominic Perry with the Super Chat. He wants the spin of the wheel. There we go. Oh, yeah, now this thing's spinning. All right. Ooh, that might have been a little too loose. That's a little questionable there. Might have tightened this thing back down. Uh, yeah. So let's see. Where are we stopping? Ask it a question. All right. You get to ask a question, Dominic. Um, let's see. Uh, okay. What's up? Uh, Raul Duke, are avocados like toilet paper? No, but I've hit the point where I'm afraid of going anywhere near City Market or any of the grocery stores, so I have to go to the Little Market to get everything. Their produce is a little questionable at times. Plus, their avocados aren't ripe, so if I just wait a while, they'll be a little bit riper. Uh, let's see. Okay. Okay, let's see what we've got here. Michael Malowski, what are your top five non-snowboarding YouTube channels? I actually did a live to top five in, uh, I think on Wednesday's live stream for you, talking about the channels that I'm watching. But some of my favorite are like the Joe Blow movies. Uh, Cinemassacre is really good with like rental reviews. Uh, I don't really watch their Let's Play shit. Um, in her prime, she was amazing, was Comic Book Girl 19, but she... she she pulled a Britney and shaved her head and got fucking weird, and I don't, I don't know how I feel about that anymore. Uh, good, bad flicks. Um, I actually followed this girl out of Canada called Laura Legends, and she she's just a toy collector, but I just find her absolutely fascinating and her weird love of Jurassic Park as well. Um, Philip DeFranco, I watch him regularly almost every day for my news and stuff. I really like the way he delivers it, even though I don't agree with him all the time. Um, I'll follow Joe Rogan just to catch clips from his podcast. I don't agree with Joe Rogan on everything, but I like his guests. So like, I pretty much just watch for the guests and pick and choose. Hot Ones, of course. Who doesn't follow Hot Ones? Sean Evans, fucking killing it in the game over there. So, yeah. Um, the, so there's a few. There's a few that I follow. Uh, Okay, let's see. Uh, Bourbon on the Mountain, looking for lightweight free ride binding suggestions. Let's give me a spin on the wheel here really quick. Sticker pack. All right, you get a you get another sticker pack because I know you won one last time. So, yeah, anyways, just email me. You know the deal. Info at Angry Snowboarder for anyone that wins a sticker pack. Take a screenshot of it. Send it to me. Make sure it's got your name, your address, zip code, everything like that. Um Looking for lightweight free ride binding suggestions. I mean, if you want to go lightweight, you could probably do like a Union Felcor because those are pretty lightweight. But uh, the Burton X Base, uh, the Now O Drive, the Jones Apollo. Uh, if you can actually find a set, because you. Uh, 
would be the K2 Formula C's. If not, you could do a lean AT on there and just leave the heel block in. That would be a little stiffer. Uh, and Kevin's in the chat, so he might have a few suggestions for you as well. All right. Matt likes donuts. Of the 2021 boards you've seen or received, what's the best and worst graphic? Spin again. Ooh, mystery prize. All right, Matt, you're getting your name put into the mystery prize. So uh, my favorite... My favorite graphics so far that I've seen, actually, I really like what they're doing with um, uh, uh, the new simulator. I like how they made it just black. A lot of companies are actually doing really black graphics for next year. So I really like that. But uh, my favorite graphic, and it probably won't actually get produced, was Telos had a board that was... <laughs> It was basically like a parody of uh, Jaws eating an orca and being digested in his stomach. It was just a parody of picking on the orca. And I, I really like that. As far as worst graphics, um, probably the Kemper Screamer. That thing is fucking hideous. I hate neon colors on snowboards. That shit just drives me insane. But Kevin and I, we're going to do the 2021 product preview podcast, so maybe we'll talk more about that in there. Um, okay, where was I? I saw some questions I think I was missing. Rock and Roller, have you ever got any flack for your reviews from board brands? Oh, fuck yes. Oh, my God. Capita wouldn't work with me for like 10 years Holy shit. Oh, my God. I, the union is still tough to work with over there. Uh, Chad O at Academy said that if I gave him a bad review, he was going to kick the windshield out of my Volvo, which he actually could because we live in the same town. Uh, the Never Summer guys get really butt hurt, but fuck them. I don't really care about them as a brand. Um, I've had people at Burton get angry with me. Uh, Mervin for a while wouldn't work with me because of it. Uh, let's see. Uh Solomon is pretty salty about me picking on the six piece and saying how much of a piece of shit board it was for 2020, but it is a hunk of shit. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Oh no. I've had plenty of people over the years tell me all sorts of shit uh, about the reviews and getting all butthurt and not wanting to work with me. I know, uh, I think it was it Sully at, at Rome was really pissed of my review of the, um, Oh, God, what was the fucking turd of a board that gave it the Death Sled Award the one year? Fucking, they elevated the contact point, so in like a triangle, like the center of the board triangle was flat, and then everything was elevated. You lost everything on it. Uh, yeah, uh, it's pretty, pretty bad. Um, Arezra with the super chat. All right, spin of the wheel. Here we go. What do we got? Ask another question so you can get a second question with this. Uh you think any hills will reopen this year? Right now, A Basin was probably the best likely, most likely one. They just laid off 400 of their seasonal employees and then cut their year-round staff down to one-third time. So do I think so? At this point, no, I don't. I mean, if they do, it's going to be like a – and every it, it's going to be a miracle if any resort opens. But you know what? We got next season – like right now, we just got to keep our mind occupied on like – Getting by day to day, keeping the morale up, and getting there. Next season's a new thing. Like we effectively, maybe the Southern Hemisphere will be a season that we have, but by and large, we just got to be looking at getting through this day to day and stuff like that. You know. So, Tom T. Avon, did yes fix the grades for 2021? Went from top in 2019 to third in 2020, but next year. That's one I don't think that changed in the catalog. I can't remember exactly, but I'm pretty sure that's one that doesn't change. So, yeah. Okay. Let's see. Josh Berwinski, is that the 2021 Super DOA behind you? That is correct, sir. That is. Okay. Nick K, what do you think is the next breakthrough technology in snowboarding? 
Well, looking at the current state of things, affordable lift tickets. <laughs> Honestly. Um, no, I think I think the I think the next big thing that we probably will see is more green technology being accepted and not having a, a higher price to it. I think we'll see it trickle down and get more affordable. I think that'll be the next big one. All right. Moderator of the day on here, bottled and cork. Make up with Union. Do the Custom House Atlas. I hate the Atlas. I would never slap my graphic on a fucking Atlas in a Custom House. I fucking hate that. It'd be the Force before it'd be the Atlas. All right. Spin again. Story. Tell you guys about the time I met Kevin. So my friend JP used to be the K2 rep. And... One of the things I would do, even though I wasn't working in shops anymore, to get uh, free boots and bindings was I would offer to work a couple sales for him. So he would send me to a store for like Labor Day weekend, ski rec sales, shit like that for whatever. So Kevin was working at Colorado Ski and Golf down in Colorado Springs at the time, and JP had sent me down there. So I'm sitting there and we're talking, and I'm like, are you so-and-so from snowboardingforum.com? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. And so I'm looking at him, and I'm like, I'm going to make you a lot of commissions today. And Kevin and I proceeded to clean fucking house selling boots that day. His, it was his like first or second day on the job too. And uh, that led to Kevin driving up from Colorado Springs to shred with me and do reviews with me to Kevin lived with me to we're at where we are today. But yeah, Kevin and I, the first day and, and during all that mass sales, um, we got these two, these two black chicks that were like hood, hood and it was like like big hoop earrings fake nails hair did all that shit these women were fucking amazing best customers you could ever fucking have i think kevin and i spent like two and a half hours boot fitting these two and it was phenomenal because by the end of it they were just spending money didn't give a shit it was a it was a good time so yeah that's kind of how kevin and i met so let's see what we got here See. Alan Poon, what do you think of that phantom base treatment that doesn't require waxing? So the phantom stuff is actually like a lacquer that you put on your board. It has to cure. Like most people think it's a spray on liquid, blah, 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 you know, and, and you're done with it. This is like putting a powdered clear coat on a card like you have to spread it evenly let it cure there's like some crazy shit I, i'm really curious about it but at the same time i'm also curious like what happens when you get a core shot have to fill the base and then you have to patch that section as well uh, let's see Ding Kang, since now bindings have the pivot binding, skate tech, did you feel unstable when flat basing them? No, because it you don't have a lot of movement in there. Like when you're when you're holding a binding off the board, it looks like a lot, but when you actually mount it in there, you're talking about a couple millimeters of it. You actually feel more power going into the edge with it more than anything. So yeah. Ah, Kevin coming back with uh Rome Death Sled was the cross rocket. Yeah, yeah, the cross rocket. Oh, they were fucking bitter with me on that one, and that board never got better, and then they discontinued it. Whew, fuck that thing. That board was awful. Uh, yeah. Story 3333. Best red dad boards, true twin, mostly groomers, working on park, but a one board for all, only have rode about 20 days total. Here's what I would get. Since you want a true twin and mostly groomers working on park. I would get a ride kink. It's camber or a DC ply. Those would be the two right there for working on park. They're not going to overpower you. They're pretty mellow. You can progress with them, have a lot of fun with it, and you won't feel bad if you run them into the ground and destroy them. So, yeah. Okay. El Gato Gordo. Ooh, the fat cat. Un gato en sus pantalones, señor. Spin of the wheel. Ask another question after this. Uh, what are some good boards for buttering for short, heavy people? 
you could go with a volume shifted board if you wanted to. And then you're looking at like a ride war pig or a K2 party player. But I think, um, it's the Nidecker uh, sensor. That board is probably going to be the, one of the best butter boards you could get or the lobster shifter as well. Those two are pretty fucking phenomenal in terms of being able to butter. Uh, I actually like, I think the, Solomon Sleepwalker would work as well. Uh, K2 Worldwide Weapon, that's another good one. You know, you, you got plenty of options out there. Basically, you want to find, like, straight jibstick boards. I mean, DC PBJ should be on that list as well. Uh, if you did Capita, the Horoscope. Uh, yeah, or even the Ultra Fear from them as well. But, yeah, you got plenty of options out there. <laughs> Okay, Arez, Arez, so, uh top five worst boards you rode. Actually did a list, top five most mediocre snowboard. It's for 2020. So it was Solomon, six-piece. Ride Berserker, but we found out that they gave me a pre-production one that was wrong. The K2 Medium, but they gave me one with like 12 millimeters of camber, so we got to take those two off the list. Skate Banana should definitely be on that list. That thing fucking sucks dicks with its butthole. Uh the Soul Stick Pocket Rocket, because you made a powder board that fucking just absolutely sucks at everything, including riding POW. Kevin can attest to that as well. But, I mean, then you look back at stuff like the Rome Cross Rocket. Uh, you know, I've, I've ridden a lot of stuff where, at the end of the day, you're just like, God, this is just such a turd. Oh, the, the GNU T to B was another piece of ass as well. Let's see. <laughs> v West Phantom Base sounds like something that Step on Binding New Users would like. I, I concur with that statement. What about a one and all mountain freestylish deck that won't overlap with the Hanali that's a mid wide and not above a 155? Um, I think actually, if you go with the Endeavor Cloud, I think it comes in a 56, and I think there's a 53 as well. Um, that shape would be good for you. Otherwise, uh, you might want to go to like a war pig or a super pig. And um, let's see. You know, something that won't overlap with that. You know, let's see. Um, maybe you might like a GNU Hyper Kiarv as well. So there's that. Uh, let's see. We've got some super chats. Okay, Ding Kang with the Super Chat. Let's give you a spin here, bud. Spin again. Spin again. Mystery prize. All right, putting you in the mystery prize. And to answer your question, give me your free ride picks. Do you ever go outside resorts? Also, what's with Capitalist Graphics this year? What are they smoking? Jesus Christ, how many questions are you popping into this fucking thing? Holy shit. Um... Free ride picks. I actually just did the wide free ride picks. So, um, so there is that uh, on there. But if you actually go through the top fives playlist, there is uh, a bunch of friggin' different boards out there. I mean, right now, I would probably say like my top picks for real free ride boards. So, See, I'm not like in this mindset where I'm thinking 2021 and I still have to think 2020 in there. But uh, Telus DST is one that I think of. Uh, let's see. Actually, um, Capita Kazu. Everyone's going to be like, no, no, you can do park with it. No, Kazu is like a free ride board in my opinion. As well, if we're looking at Mervin, uh, I actually like the T-Rice Climax for free riding. Uh, the Rosinal XV would be another one uh, that I would consider with Jones flagship or ultra mind expander. So there's a few in that one. Um, I go out resorts out gates. I strategically pick my lines. I know where I'm going, how to get back to the resort. If you're talking full backcountry, I don't do that. That's not my thing. Um, what's with Capita's graphics this year? What were they smoking? Uh, 
it's capita they did they were actually more like classic throwback capita graphics to like 15 years ago more than anything okay let's see brandon adkins ever dabbled in the urban riding world yeah once uh never never really you lose a turn never really panned out that way for me so um just wasn't anything that i was super stoked on so you know just wasn't my thing bourbon on the mountain super chat for kevin all right sticker you know the drill hit me up which i think you want a sticker pack so i can just put it in there for that as well uh okay chance done any brand to lean toward in boots for someone has shattered their ankles and has wide feet oh man um shattered ankles are always a tough one to deal with because you've got pins and plates and all sorts of shit going on in there but you might like some of the van stuff burton has some stuff especially like the burton japan stuff tends to run a little bit wider 32 but i don't think they make anything supportive enough so uh in there i want to tell you to go look at a k2 or a ride even though you got a wider foot uh you might not be able to fit like the mesis plus you might be but the big thing is that boa conda technology i find that really easy to manipulate for like a shattered ankle and for anyone that's got that and let's give you a spin of the wheel Ooh, mystery prize. All right. We're going to add you in there. Yeah. All right. Chance. Let's do this. Write this down. Put that in there. So, all right. Chance done. Yeah. Um, yeah. It sucks when you're recovering from ankle injuries like that. So, uh, yeah. Rich Lesnar, are you stoked to ride the 2021 niche story with the 2016 Aether graphic? No, because it's still the same as the 2020 niche story, and I, I don't really care. So, no, not really my thing. Yeah, let's see. Cameron Perry, just a PSA, don't ride a DOA in POW. I did ride a DOA in POW, and I had a good time on it, so, meh. Okay. Olive, I currently have a Bro Dozer Never Summer Infinity 151 as my park board and was looking for another option. I have a Be Nice 47 I try to use as a park board, but I feel the magnet traction is kind of unnecessary. Which is, you're a little thing. Why are you riding 51s for park? Damn. Uh, so, man, women's stuff. This is like where I really lack in this. But at least you're acknowledging that Never Summer's a bro dozer brand. I, here's the thing I would look at. Um, go check out some of the K2 Women's Park stuff and see. Because my friend Melissa rides from and as does my friend Kelsey. And those girls swear by those boards and I trust their opinion. If you're looking at GNU, you're stuck with magnet traction on everything. And that might not be it. Uh, there's the... Was it? Is it the front of? No, it's not the front of me. Uh, or maybe it is the front of me. There's the women's one from Rosnell that's Cam Rocker, and that's pretty solid. Otherwise, uh, God, dude, I fucking fail so miserably at women's park stuff, unfortunately. Uh, but anything would be better than what you have. It, it is basically is where I'm going at with that. Uh, Let's see. Uh, okay, I think we're caught up on those questions. Tom T, hydrate with some Gatorade with this. 2 a.m. equals sleep. Well, you still get a spin of the wheel before you pass out. Movie recommendation. Well, before you pass out, movie recommendation. I think everyone should watch all three of the Smokey and the Bandit movies. Well, more so Smokey and the Bandit 1 and 2. 3 is a little bit questionable, but Smokey and the Bandit, for sure. 1 and 2. Burt Reynolds, best mustache in the business. Rest in peace. Amazing fucking human. Makes me just want to own a 77 Trans Am more than anything. Plus, Jerry Reed wrote Eastbound and Down 
in, after a night of copiously drinking and doing drugs, he wrote the theme song, you know, eastbound and down, loaded up and trucking. We going to do what they say can't be done. So yeah, God, I need to get my vinyl to Smokey and the Bandit 2 soundtrack back from my brother. Fucking love that soundtrack. Don't have a record player, but I'll stare at that damn thing. All right. Let's see. All the knowns. Averin, how would you compare the Telus backslash with the Battalion Party Wave? The backslash is going to be softer torsionally. It's also not as drastically wide or as much setback in the nose as the Party Wave. Party Wave will end up being stiffer off the tail. It's going to have more drive. It's also going to float a lot easier in heavier snow because it funnels it out to the side due to that 3BT in there. Bottled in cork. Burt Reynolds is dead. Yeah, dude, he fucking died like a year ago, man. Get with the fucking program. Died of pneumonia. It's sad. Uh, Eric Kim, did you get to review any drop manufacturing snow gear? Yeah, I mean, I could if I really wanted to at this point. Like, it would be a long-form review. The goggles are mediocre at best. There's a lot of distortion in the lens. Uh, the magnets on the frames cause them to pop out. The gloves... Some of the gloves are whack with their fit. Like, they just don't fit. Uh, the Tahoma, I think that's what it is, or Tacoma. I think it's the Tahoma. is probably the best glove that they actually make. Uh, Will Grimm, you know how with skate shoes they have cup sole and vulcanized? What if snowboard shoes had that too? Do you mean snowboard boots or like the shoes that snowboarders wear? They've tried vulcanized soles. They don't fucking grip for shit on snow. And that cup sole, like, it, it's two different worlds, buddy. Every time they try to cross it over, it never works out well. All right. Let's see. John, did you actually do a review of the Climax? Yes, I'm pretty sure. Maybe I was thinking of the Gold Member. No, I rode the Climax. I rode the Climax at some point. I know I did. Because I had it. Because I had like 25 boards from Mervyn at one point. Uh, yeah. Water bottle, you sure you meant the clout and not the Pioneer or Ranger? Oh, I meant the clout for what you were describing. I mean, you could do the Ranger or the Pioneer, but don't let the clout fool you. I think that might be the board for you. All right. Let's see. Uh, let's see. I think we're kind of catching up on questions here so if anyone's got more questions make sure you pop them over there we're almost an hour into this thing don't forget to at 8 15 p.m mountain standard all new top five for all you snowboarders of the internet with special guest randy the warranty guy and there's a lot of zima in it there's so much zima he spilled so much zima all over this couch it's fucking unreal uh yeah let's see uh, yeah t have you ridden the reworked Black Snowboard to Death or the Endeavor Alpha? I have ridden the Black Snowboard to Death. Holy shit, that board is fucking next level. Uh, fucking, this is probably the best version of the Black Snowboard of Death that in the last five years. I mean, ten years, whatever. This is what it should have always been. This is it. As far as the Endeavor Alpha, uh, I haven't checked the box that showed up today. I'm letting it chill outside because coronavirus can live on cardboard for 24 hours. Uh, before I, I touch it and bring it in the house. But um, my guess is that maybe if I can get on that board, I will. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Josh Ruinski, overall, I think Roman K2 have the best snowboard lines. Uh, for 2021, I love what Rome did this for 2021. Holy shit, that overhaul. And K2 added, I think, like the right boards in the right place. Um, I like the direction that K2 is going right now. So, yeah. yeah I think we're kind of caught up on those questions. Uh, 
I run a zoomy. I'm looking at a Solomon six stick split 162 for variable Australian conditions. Nothing too steep, but fewer power day powder days than not. I'm 90 kilograms US nine boot. I think the big issue I would have with a six stick split in Australia is your guys' snowpack tends to be more moisture driven. And I think the nose of that board won't plow through as well as other decks out there. That would be my only issue. Otherwise, I'd say go for it. All the knowns. Averin, do you think the Colorado Resort should limit the ticket sales to help with the traffic on I-70? If not, what do you think is the solution since the buses were a failure? Oh, my God, dude. One, they need to limit ticket sales or season pass sales. The problem is they do that military pass for 99 bucks with with the Air Force Base right down in Colorado Springs. Everyone in their family fucking sucks that up. That's where the vast majority of them is. You sell that for $99, of course you're going to have issues with it. There's that. And then the other thing is they oversell how many tickets they should. They, they, they've notoriously done this for three years. Yeah. It, it's it's not even – well, I shouldn't say the Colorado Resorts. It's Vail that does that because if you actually get to Copper, you realize how uncrowded it is on a weekend compared to Vail. Like it's it's Copper crowded, but it's not Vail Resort crowded by any means. Like a busy day at Copper is I think between thirteen and 20,000 people. Like 20,000 would be the max peak, but a busy day at Breckenridge, like average, is just 25,000 people. And – you know, I mean, when you're looking at numbers and Breckenridge is saying that they've got like 25 to 28,000 people and Copper's like, well, we got 13 to 16 and they spread it out so much better. It's that. But I, I think, you know, we overdeveloped the area. We've done too much here. And unfortunately, um, it, it's just, it's just, uh, yeah, I think capping ticket sales like they do at Powder Mountain makes the most sense. But Vail at the end of the day is a publicly held company and they've got shareholders to answer to uh, so yeah uh, rock and roller what's your choice for all around day of the driver so there's pretty much three boards that i ride for myself that i own i have an endeavor archetype a telos backslash and a rome warden the warden is kind of my park fuck around but the backslash can also be a park fuck around pow board i ride the backslash more than anything all right Mike Garcia with the Super Chat. Have you had a chance to ride Big Sky? I have not. I uh, was actually supposed to be there right now. Mike, you want a sticker? You know the drill. Email me, info at Angry Snowboarder. Take a screenshot of this, and I will drop that in the mail. Okay. Okay, let's see. Alan Poon, curious on how now bindings feel when flat base and they feel like just about any other fucking binding. You don't notice any difference. Cameron Perry, did you see the video K2 and Vintage sponsor did it bear with Luna Stars? Is that the stupid chick that's got the ass implants that slits her pants so her ass crack is showing? Because she's fucking disgusting. She she just is everything that is, I feel is just wrong with beauty standards and she's just fucking unattractive and she's just a fucking whore not in like the sexual sense but like for media attention and instagram modeling and whatever i i saw a clip of it i haven't like i saw some instagram shit on snowboarding is dead but i haven't watched that video because people like that i don't want to give fucking attention to she's not a fucking snowboarder and uh, uh yeah, yeah fucking bleh. <sighs> Will Graham, Aaron, what do you think about the Florida Spring Breakers? That is Darwinism in acting itself. If every one of them dies or gets so gets their lungs so horribly fucked from this that it is a learning experience for them, the world will be a better place. Like yeah, I would love to have spring break going on right here. I'd love to have the resorts open. Instead, I'm making top fives and streaming daily for everyone else. Why? Because I'm a fucking responsible goddamn motherfucking human being and understand what a pandemic is. Those people? Fuck them. They should go low priority if they go to the hospital and need a ventilator. Like, if they have to be triaged, oh, you were at spring break? Oh, you died. It's your fault. You chose to do that. I mean, my roommate said it best. 
What they should have done when everyone was on the beach, the cops should have gone down, cordoned everything off with tape, sat there and been like, all right, all of you are now quarantined. We are going to make sure that you are mandatory checked in. This is it. You are sitting here and that's it. Like, no, those Darwinism, like people are just fucking stupid. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, so. Carl Fisher got the snow fist, pucker fist for charging up high, looking at stuff to maybe screw around on low angle stuff. Spring break, maybe? Oh, get a slush slasher for sure. Get a slush slasher. I think that would be solid. It'll be softer too, more forgiving. The other thing, uh, the other board I would recommend would be like a Telus backslash. Those two, yeah, if you got a pucker fist, I think that the uh, slush slasher or a backslash would be really solid. Let's see. Kevin Kim, I want to get better at snowboarding, but I don't live close to a mountain. How should I practice? So get a balance board or make a balance board, which if you need to make a balance board, two liters soda, shake it up till it's hard, old skateboard, and just put it down on top and you can just roll back and forth on it. That's going to give you better balance. Otherwise, skateboarding will help you as well. Hopefully more than anything. Uh the big thing is it's muscle memory. The more you ride, the more you develop it. I mean, if you really prioritize snowboarding, you'll figure out a way to ride more. Like I built my whole life around it because that's all I wanted to do. After all this, who knows? If it goes back to life as normal, snowboarding. If I we go Great Depression and I have to work on a chain gang, manually building roads so that we can rebuild our infrastructure, fuck it. That's what I'm doing next. But, yeah, uh, anyways, yeah, just snowboarding more really does help you. Uh, let's see. Okay. Raul Duke. What about the old fools that are just taking heat? They've seen some shit. They've lived their life. They might just want to die. This might be their version of assisted suicide if you really think about it. Like, they might just not care. I mean, you know, if they all die, there, there will be the largest shift of wealth in this country. So, I mean, I'm taking the approach that any boomers that are not taking this seriously are suicidal secretly, and they just are like, fuck it, life's over, I don't care. Because if there was a true apocalypse Mad Max scenario, they're like, we wouldn't survive. Yeah. Okay. Eldon Owens, Avram, what do you think the future of Burton – will be with Jake gone. Will it lose its mojo? I think I think we're going to see a very big shift in the marketing of the brand. I think we're going to also see a shift in the product offerings. And I think we might see a slight constriction with it. You know, I think we might see some stuff kind of tie in. And, you know, they, they have a very expansive line across the board. And I think if they would constrict and cut down, because they have so much overlap, I think it would be a better place. But right now, the leadership of the brand, you know, the family's still involved with it. It's still a private company. I think um, I think it'll be solid. So, yeah. Let's see. Okay. I think we're kind of caught up on those. Um yeah. Save. Cameron Perry, I'll be back with a six pack for you. Is is it a six pack of CBD soda? Is, what what is it? I I don't I don't drink. Yeah, let's see. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I think I think we're gonna kind of see Burton shake some stuff out. Alan Poon, can I get that mustache on that mannequin? No, that God, dude, that that mustache is haggard as shit, and it's glued on all half-assed, and it's starting to come off. I think I might if I peel it, I gotta like draw a new mustache on there. Uh. Snowbirdie, the happy snowboarder. What do you think? I think it's a fucking stupid fucking idea. 
fuck that. So many people over the years have said that they were going to do that. I think I actually bought the domain name for that and registered some social media accounts so it wouldn't happen because I fucking hate that shit. Eh, we should be happy. You want the happy snowboarder? Go look at Snowboard Pro Camp. That's, there's your version of someone induced by Prozac being fake as fuck and happy all the time. And I'm fine. We're fine. That's the type of person that takes a shotgun, puts it in their mouth, and blows their head off when the fucking shit gets deep. Angry is where it's at because it's a real passion. It is a, It is all the emotions encompassed into one. Happy is a fake emotion 90% of the time. Angry is a real emotion 99% of the time. Uh, uh, all knowns. Averin, I'm going to South America this summer. If we get travel restrictions lifted, would you recommend Argentina or Chile? I would go Chile. I used to live with a Chilean backcountry guide in Washington, Nico Demetrio. Great dude. Uh, everything he told me, though, is uh, if you go to Argentina, he's like, yeah, it's good riding. It's whatever. But most of the guides, the backcountry guides where they take you, they actually cross over into Chile and take you to better terrain is the way that he explained it to me. So Chile, for sure. Uh, Brandon Atkins, really tempted to get a Jones flagship or Mountain Twin from underground. Which one is better for all Mountain Freestyle? Oh, Mountain Twin, for sure. Dude, pick up, pick up one of those boards from... Underground. So for anyone that wants to know, my local shop, undergroundsnowboards.com, is selling a bunch of demo boards that were probably ridden less than five times. They're in really prime shape, and it would really be supporting a great local shop. And for anyone that's going in the backcountry that knows what they're doing, please be safe going out there, understand all that stuff. My other local shop, Gravity at Copper, which is uh, – they use two E's instead of a Y, so it's gravity.com, is selling backcountry equipment. They are shipping out daily. Dylan is there, so please support my two local shops if you don't have one. Uh, it would be really awesome just to see the community do that. Uh, yeah. Okay, story 3333. They closed all the beaches in South Florida today. They've been packed down here. A lot of people came here for spring break. They just made all restaurants carry out only and closed non-essential. Okay, so you guys are about 10 days behind where we are. Um, just so everyone understands, I'm actually going to make a video. Saturday I said I'm not doing any internet things, but I will be running around the town of Breckenridge. I'm going to put together like a whole news story type thing, kind of showing what it's like living in true quarantine because Breckenridge is doing it better than just about anywhere else in the country from near as I can tell. Uh, so, yeah, for anyone that really wants to understand – um, for anyone that really wants to understand like what we're doing here. So the first quarantine order came down from the town and then about, I think it was four or six hours later than the County came down, but we shut down all hotels, short-term rentals, everything like that. We gave tourists and second homeowners till yesterday at noon to get out. We have now kicked them out. Um, we, you know, we've cut store hours. We're down to essential businesses only. So dispensaries, liquor stores, grocery stores, pharmacies, hardware stores are open. Restaurants are curbside pickup and takeout only. Uh, same thing with coffee shops, stuff like that. So it's it's limiting social distancing. Um, there should be right now in town, there should be about 65,000 people here. I think we're down under 1,200 people. Uh, I live right in the heart of downtown. There are three cars parked out in front every morning out here, and they are for the local businesses downstairs that they can work from the office because it's just one person working there. There's an insurance agent and stuff, so they're there. And then we have a coffee shop as well. The coffee shop has a window open, and they're just doing pickup orders. But uh, I want to do a whole video kind of showing people like where we are as a community because it's so different here. It reminds me almost of mud seasons 15 years ago, which was the sh shoulder season here. So I might try to put a little video together, like two to five minute video, and kind of just see and hopefully put it out to the internet so people can kind of understand like what we're doing because I feel we are doing it better than everyone else. I mean, this social distancing thing, like my my neighbor, he's, he's like family to me and I see him. We're still standing 10 feet apart when we're out in the alley shoveling and doing stuff. So yeah. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> Up freak acts. Don't worry. We all die of starvation after the overreaction. Uh, I, I'm not too worried. I think I got about a month and a half or two months of food here. Like I'm smart. I bought very, I didn't hoard. I bought very casually. Trucks are still getting supplies in. So yeah. Um, okay. 
Yeah. Okay, so got another question from Eldon Owens. Avrin, what good Samaritan shoveling did you do this morning? I didn't. It actually got sunny and melted the snow. Uh, then, the you know, it was sunny, melted off the snow, so I didn't do any shoveling today. But for anyone that's in the mountain towns or anything like that and you need something to do, uh, I strongly recommend that you adopt a fire hydrant right now, especially if you're in Tahoe, Mammoth, any place that got pummeled with snow. Go and dig out fire hydrants. That is key because if anything happens and the fire department has to put out a fire, if they cannot get to the fire department, you are delaying that time. Shovel that up. After that, shovel out businesses that are closed. Shovel out residents that maybe they're shut-ins or do anything. If you can um, do what you do your part and do some community shoveling, if you can make it so that entranceways are still easily accessible in the event that something happens, people will be able to get there. Plus, it's good exercise since we're all kind of just being very sedentary. So for anyone that's really questioning what I'm doing, I'm, I'm trying to go out like when we when it snows and shovel where I need to. I mean, yesterday I shoveled out the alley behind my place, the alley behind the Catholic Church, the alley behind the Hearthstone restaurant, the front steps of the Hearthstone, the parking uh, and side entrance to Twist restaurant. I shoveled out Cup of Joe Coffee, the, uh, I think it's Aero Insurance that's underneath me. I shoveled them out. I shoveled out the hairstylist. Uh, you know, I spent about an hour and a half shoveling yesterday. It was heavy, wet snow, but I shoveled it all out so that access was available for people to get where they needed to do. So anyone that's in the mountains needs something to do. It's snowing. Uh, adopt a fire hydrant. That's something I could do that I would strongly recommend for people. Uh, Mike Garcia with the super chat. So Stoke Breck has it down. All right, spin of the wheel. All right, Mike, you get a sticker, so hit me up with your address. I'll drop that in the mail tomorrow. Also, remember, guys, there are two mystery packs, uh, prize packs available, and we've only got four people entered uh, in this. So for all you people that Super Chat, you get a spin of the wheel, and you have a chance of winning one of these mystery prizes. So, yeah. Also, Shred Ahead Snowboarding is in the chat. Um, just want to let everyone know, Jim and Ted are in here. And he's asking me if I got his last post. I did. Thank you. I appreciate it. You guys are killing it. Seeing your videos. You guys, I expect more content from you guys. You got the time. You need to be dropping nuggets of wisdom on this uh, generation of people that we have here. So, And for anyone that doesn't or hasn't yet, hop over to Shred Ahead Snowboarding. Subscribe. Trust me on this. You guys will love it. Best snowboarding channel out there right now. Dominique Perry with the Super Chat. All right, he wants a spin of the wheel. Here we go. Ask a question. All right. We might have to amend the uh, the wheel here. I'm not sure. I don't know. But right now, right now it's looking like you got a one in four chance of winning a prize. Okay. This, this, I love this, and Alan Poon points this out. Costco has a sign out, not accepting returns on TP, bottled water, etc. Those that pan panic buyers have to sit on it. Yeah, no. Uh, if you panic bought that shit, you're stuck with it. That's my theory. Like, I didn't panic buy, and everything I got, if I don't use it and things start to normalize and whatever, it's all stuff I can donate to the local food pantry if I have to, to get it in the hands. I also bought enough food that if any of my friends fall in hard times, I can put a box together really quick and they'll be taken care of. The only thing that I would remotely say I hoarded was toilet paper, but I bought that three weeks before everyone else was. And you know what? I buy like a lot and then I just sit on it for six to eight months. And then when I run out, I just go and buy more. Um, you know, that's, that's it. So I can't even say that I did that, but it is good that I did it. Cause one of my friends hit me up. He's like, I live in a house with four girls and we got four rolls of toilet paper. I'm scared. And I was like, I'll drop some more off. So yeah. All right. Josh Rinsky just got a Trump ad on the stream. Yeah. I've got to get in there and I, I, it, they're supposed to be turned off. I don't know why it's still doing that. So yeah. Um, but anyways, for all you guys that really want to help out, um, uh, any YouTube creator that's making content for you consistently, think about letting the ads run all the way through. I mean, unless it's like a live stream and you really want to get in there, but if you're watching a video, let it run through. They get a higher ad rate. They make more money. And these are guys are independent contractors. If they don't have another job or something to fall back on, they're not getting unemployment and they're not getting bailouts. Like you look at Conan, uh, Conan, uh, Colbert, 
John Oliver, those guys that are putting out stuff, and you can watch their stuff, and they've got their ads, and you can skip them sometimes. If you can skip them, like those guys are getting paid regardless, but you look at your small like, little YouTube creators, this is their livelihood, and they're still trying to do stuff. So, uh, yeah. Bottled and cork with the California PSA. My wife just came back from shopping. Trader Joe's, pretty good. Mother's Market, local chain, fully stocked. Target, dead fucking empty. Yeah, uh, support your little local grocery stores if you can, too. Um, I support my little local market where where I worked in their liquor store, mainly out of fear of the main grocery store because it's so crowded um, and it's been picked clean. But they've also had everything that I've, ever, that I've needed. Like, they've barely run out of anything. I mean, they still have, like, all the essentials and then some. So I try to support those guys. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Okay, I think we're caught up on questions there. Yeah, and uh, Ding Kang also wants everyone to know, for all you people that can't find enough groceries, try finding Asian markets. Panic buyers usually skip that. Yeah, any of the non-white neighborhoods, so uh, Latino, African, or uh, Asian, those grocery stores are not picked clean. Also, I would never fuck with a Korean bodega owner in my life. I remember the riots in L.A. and those guys being on the roof with their AK-47. I would never fuck with any of those people. Those guys are way more stock than any grocery store ever would be. Like they're strapping, but they also have stuff. Like we have, um, we have the La Perla Mall in Silverthorne, and they were still like cutting meats, like good cuts of meat and stuff. And they were out there. And then the local grocery or the little market grocery stores in Copper and Keystone are still stocked. So uh, we're getting supplies now, so it's not that big a deal. And I think the supply chain they've kind of figured this out. Also, I believe our governor in Colorado called in the National Guard, and he's going to try to utilize them for helping restock grocery stores, which will be really funny seeing people in uniforms restocking grocery stores. Okay. Let's see. Cameron Perry, what do you mean, you people? I mean, you people. You can take offense to that however you want. Uh Let's see. And, and also, you know, like, please don't be racist, people. We're all trying to make it through this. Like, I see people are being racist to Asians and just people being shit. We don't need a race war to start. Like, everyone just be cool. We're all human. We're all of the, like, we're, we're all fucking humans. We're all the same fucking species. Fuck it. I don't really care. So, yeah, just be cool. Be chill. Yeah, so... All right, Kevin is stepping out of the chat, so it looks like you guys are stuck with me and Billy Ray Valentine. Okay. Ding Kang, what's the correct way to avoid injuries on rails? I always have the fear of crashing on into rails and hurt myself badly. Well, if you're scared of them, you probably shouldn't hit them because there's always that risk. But the bigger thing is be, be aware, like try to slide off the side if you can instead of slide back. So like if this is the rail and you hop on this way, slide off. If you're going to kick back, just understand, you got to understand how to fall properly. Start with small stuff and work your way up. Like there's always going to be that risk. And as I say, always scare yourself snowboarding, but you got to learn how to mitigate those risks. And if you're, if you're seriously worried or you're working a career where an injury could ruin you, weigh the risk versus the reward on that for yourself too. Okay. T. Espo, Dollar General was stocked up till the Joeys from Jersey showed up. Oh, my God. Yeah, Dollar Generals actually have a really good supply tank chain, so there you go. Um, okay, all nodes. Avery and Kevin, I heard the Jones flagship was stiffened back up a bit for next year after making it softer for this past year. You know anything about that? I know that they did an overhaul on that board again, so there's supposed to be a tweak in there. It wouldn't surprise me if they made it a little stiffer, so yeah. Yeah, so yeah, so there's kind of that. Yeah, let's see. 
Um, yeah, I think we're kind of catching up on questions. I've uh, been in here an hour and 24 minutes. So I tell you what, if I don't get a few more questions, um, I think we're going to probably dip out of here. Michael Anderson, just seen the new ARCA. It looks cool. The fact they're donating to charity that helps ARCA's appeals to the hippie in me. Anything new on it? Does it complement my ride algorithm? What difference would I feel? So they added a – there's a C3 version of the ORCA actually for next year. Um, but uh, would it complement your algorithm? Yes. Yes, it would. Uh, you would have a short little fun party board that you could have some fun with as well. Okay. Chris Wong, Chuck Norris has been exposed to coronavirus. Now coronavirus is on a 14-day quarantine. Keep up the good work. <sighs> Spin of the wheel, Chris. All right. What do we got here? Story time. Story time. Random factoid. First Chuck Norris movie that I've ever fucking seen in my life was uh, Firewalkers or whatever it was. So the one with him and Louis Gossett Jr. out in the desert where it's like a poor man's Indiana Jones. Uh, somehow I convinced my aunt to rent that movie for me when i was six years old don't know how i did it probably because i was asking for that or the uh the toxic crusader or toxic avenger no it's toxic crusader i don't know yeah anyways trauma movie so it was either a canon movie or a trauma movie i had a fucked up family let me watch that bullshit as a kid all right let's see what we got here we got a super chat from dominic perry comparable boards to the outsiders spin of the wheel we're on the line. Movie recommendation. All right. Um, I'll give you a movie recommendation in a minute, but comparable boards to The Outsiders. I would go with The Interior Plane Project, Haro, The Ride Kink. Uh, we could go with The Rome Agent as well. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I can think of that would be compared. Oh, uh, you could probably even throw the LibTech box knife in there. Not the box scratcher, but the box knife. Movie recommendation. Uh, we are going to go with all the Friday the 13th movies are on Amazon Prime right now. So start with the first one. and You can watch Kevin Bacon get an arrow shoved through his neck. I love all those movies. Plus Tom Savini did the special effects on the first one. So, yeah, check those out. T. Espo with the $2 Super Chat. He's hoping for the mystery prize. All right. You're on the line. Now ah, you got story. Well, I don't know. Um, the rate we're going, I don't know. You got the people that won the mystery prize. It's looking good for them, either or. Um, but, uh, yeah, stories. Stories, oh, man. Tell you about the time I watched one of the dudes on The Bachelor carry his girlfriend out of uh, – out of Liquid Lounge here in Breckenridge. So Jesse Sisnak, who was on The Bachelor and he won and then married some girl and lives in Vail, I don't know, pro snowboarder. Use that term loosely because he's not a good snowboarder. He's got a good crippler and that's about it. But anyways, uh, my friends used to rent from him and so they would hang out with him. And he was doing like MTV's Made or something at the time. It was like they were going to turn some girl into a professional snowboarder. They made a fake contest where a bunch of the local girls purposely lost on a five-foot jump to her. But that's that's another story for another fucking time. Uh, no, he, he was dating this chick that was kind of a slore. And she was hoeing herself out at the bar. And he'd had enough of it. It was New Year's Eve. He fucking – he straight up like just – he, he basically firemaned her over his shoulder in, in a packed bar. Some guy tried to grab her. He punched him in the face, and her shoes fell off. And I had to pick her shoes up and throw them at him so that she would take them with him. But it's like, dude, reality celebrities from the mountains are always fucking weird, dude. Just don't ever, don't ever trust them. They're always the fucking worst. They're always the fucking worst. Yeah. Okay. Um, Ding gang, thanks for the stokes. Soda found. All right, let's see what we got here. Well, it was ask a question. Olive with another super chat. Let's give her one. Let's see what we got here. Oh, man, that thing's going. I got to get a bigger wheel at some point. Okay, it's still going. Holy shit. That thing is fucking spinning.
spin again. I'm going to tighten this nut really quick a little bit. There we go. What do we got? Ask a question. All right. So then let's see what we got here. We got Michael Anderson wants to spin on the wheel too. Ask another question. All right. Bourbon on the Mount. Appreciate all the work this week. Mystery prize. Let's see what we got here. Sticker. All right. Well, that was the last sticker on there. Um, yeah. You know the drill. Take a screenshot. Do this. Um, okay. Let's see. I got a question here from S2000. Guy. Favorite board in your quiver right now? I think you rode the Telus the day I met up with you. That thing looks sweet. I did ride the Telus the day we met up. Um, actually, my favorite board is that Rome Warden. That thing, I just I love the fact that I can just abuse the fuck out of that thing and not give two shit. Um, but yeah. Ugh. Brandon Atkins, Liquid Lounge, my worst nightmare, but if you want to get some, <laughs> I refer to that place as the Sweat Lodge. It's actually going out of business, and uh, Broken Compass is going to have a brewery tasting room put in there. But yeah, south side of Breckenridge, you have you have Liquid Lounge, which I refer to as the Sweat Lodge, because all you do is sweat when you go in there. Then you have downstairs, you got Cecilia's, which is what you call the fucking haunted house. Because whatever you pick up in there is going to come back to haunt you in the morning when you wake up and you're like, oh my god. Seriously, I don't even drink. I picked a girl up there one time, thought she was cute, made out with her. Her friend was being a twat waffle, dragged her away, didn't hook up with her. She told me where she worked. I showed up the next, or like a couple days later where she worked, took one look at her. I was like, oh god, what the fuck was I thinking? Whoa, whoa. It was scary. It was fucking scary. So, yeah. It was, it was a very, very scary time for sure. Up freak, here's like a buck. Spin of the wheel. All right. Oh, sticker. We'll give you a spin again since that one's out. Jesus. This wheel is unbalanced. It's been spun too much. Jesus Christ. Thing keeps landing on the same one. Spin again. Is anyone hypnotized yet? Movie recommendation. Blade Runner, but not the Ridley Scott like director's cut that's three and a half hours. Try to find the uh, the original movie cut one, uh, not the factory cut. It's pretty solid. I love that movie. Besides, it set up the aesthetic for neo noir cyberpunk for the future ahead of us. So yeah, got that. Uh, let's see. Did I miss anyone? No, don't think I missed anyone there. Okay. Okay, Olive. If the fit, 151 seems too big of a board, what size would you suggest? 5'7", 130 pounds, size 8, 9 boots. I think you need to drop down to a 49, 47, 49. 47 for Park would be more ideal, I think, than anything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that, that would be my... Uh, there is a TR... John is asking that there is a... Not the Orca being C3, but there is a TRS C3. There is a TRS C3. There's also uh, a Rider's Choice C3, but there is – I don't think they've released or announced that there's an Orca C3, but my rep had one. We talked about it because he wanted me to ride it. So there is that. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. Ding Kang, thoughts on Blade Runner 2049? I've watched it once. I think I need to go back and watch it again. It, like Blade Runner was one that took some time for me to grow on me, and I think I need to rewatch it. Now that I got the time, I can do that. Let's see. Titty Sprinkles, I miss riding chairlifts already. Okay, so I think I've come up with a parody sketch thing I'm going to do. How to ride a chairlift at home. It's going to be great. I'm going to show you guys how to get the bar to hit you in the head. I'm going to show you all sorts of fun things that, you know, you can do for anyone that's missing this. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Bourbon on the Mountain. Keep the stickers. You rock road. Dude, I'm glad I can entertain you guys. Just remember next week, um, I'm going to cut back on my content offering. I need some time to process some stuff and work on some stuff, but uh, not doing anything tomorrow. I'm not doing anything on the internet tomorrow. So don't expect any content Sunday. You'll get a product review video. Uh, there'll probably be podcast segments next week. There will be a top five video next wednesday friday i will probably do a live stream and 
if I do one earlier in the week, you guys will see it. Just follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I always put up an announcement uh, whether we're going to do it or not. So, yeah, um, we're going to do that. Before I get out of here, we're going to do the um, – we're gonna draw on the. Uh, uh, we're gonna definitely draw on the first mystery prize pack. Just so everyone knows, the first mystery prize pack is you are gonna get a random piece of merchandise sent to you. So let's see what we got here. Is it, is it, there's four in there. So all right, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this. All right. Okay. Sean Grom, hit me up, Sean Grom. You uh, you're getting. A mystery piece of merchandise. Email me with your address and what size of clothing you wear. Um, if I've got something, I'm going to send it to you. If not, I'm going to have my print shop make it, and I'm going to send that to you. Um, and that is global shipping anywhere. Second mystery prize. We're down to three here. Uh, this this one, I probably should just put this on the board, but uh, I'm actually going to come and shred with you. So wherever you are, I'm if, depending on what's going on, restriction supply, travel restrictions, budgets, everything but you could potentially win a shred date with me so uh let's see what we got here all right all right we got one let's see who we got here ding kang god i hope you're not in like china or someplace in japan because that's going to be really pricey but if you are uh email me let's figure out where you are let's see if we can make up a time for or figure out if we can coordinate uh me to meet up with you yeah so that's uh that's what I was gonna try to do. That's I'm sorry. I wish, wish I maybe next next maybe next time I do this in the stream I'll work it a little bit better with the wheel and stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, that 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 was kind of it. But yeah, you guys reach out to me, Sean Grom. You're getting a t-shirt or sweatshirt or something. You're getting a piece of angry merchandise. Ding Kang, reach out to me. You want a shred date potentially? barring travel restrictions. If not, um, I will send you merchandise. So you got the option. I'll give you the option. You can, if we can't make something work. So yeah. Yeah. So there's that. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh shit. You're in Boulder. Well, fuck. We're going to go ride the uh, copper basin someplace. We're going to go shred, shred next year for sure. Fucking that. That's an easy one. If you want that, unless you want merchandise, if you want merchandise, we can make this happen. So yeah. Um, Will I throw in a throat chop? Not on any of the winners, but maybe on a random that decides to piss me off in the chairlift. Like, got to keep this arm strong, everybody. And I might be actually showing you guys proper throat punch technologies for how to do it on the, utilize it on the chairlift. So we'll go from there. Uh, yeah. We got to keep the pim pam strong. Also, remember, 8.15 p.m., which is about 35 minutes from now, we will be... Uh, premiering the new top five video from Randy, the warranty guy on the channel. I will be in the chat typing at you guys, and this will be my last communicado with all of you. Otherwise, thanks for the support. We really appreciate everything you guys have done this week. I hope that we've made this situation that all of us are in. Remember, be a good human. Don't be a shit person. Don't hoard products. Wash your hands. Wash your ass. Wash your hand after you wash your ass. And if you're eating ass, remember to wash your mouth out because no one wants to taste the hepatitis. That's a, that's a true statement right there. Also, if you do want to support us, you can swing over to Angry Snowboarder VIP if that's your thing. Also, check out AngrySnowboarderStore.com. We have stickers on there as well. Uh, next week, remember, it's going to be a little more of a mellow week for content, but the week after that, I'm going to ramp things back up. Um, Brandon Adkins, tell Vanessa Tracy I said hello once she gets done splitboard. Slide into her DMs, boy. Blow her up. We're going to do this. But, uh, yeah. Uh, anyways, I'll see you guys in another video. Thanks again for the support. Keep on rocking in the free world.